Welcome back to the PC Engine Files. I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and this curious game is called Genpi Tomoden, or The Genji and Haiki Tale of the Demon's Demise, or The Genpi Tale of the Demon Slayer. Now, I first discovered this game watching Saramaro's PC Engine Fridays, hadn't previously played it before that time, and let me tell you, it's pretty brutally hard. You'll probably gather that from watching my footage for PC Engine Files, but let me tell you a little about the history of this game. It was developed for the arcade in October of 1986, released in Japan at that time, developed by Namco and Dempa, and later published by Namco and Mikumsoft. It had subsequent releases on the Sharp X68000 in April of 1988, the Famicom in Japan, October 21st of 1988, and this version, which is on the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics, March 16th, 1990. It's had many re-releases since then, including on the Wii Virtual Console only in Japan on March 31st, 2009. It also made an appearance on Namco Museum Volume 4 for PlayStation, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to tell you about the gameplay, which you're watching right now, including this guy with the riverboat in the sky dropping 16-ton weights on my head. Not very nice of him to do that. The player makes his way along the Japanese countryside. Well, that's a dark, ominous, gothic-looking Japanese countryside if I say so, but I'll take their word for it. He makes his way along the Japanese countryside, fighting enemies as they appear. And boy, do they appear frequently. You are getting mobbed in this game. You will die a lot. The game offers three types of action. Small mode, big mode, and plain mode. You're going to see quite a lot of the small mode here. Big mode comes next, and then plain mode is the third stage that I managed to get through before the playthrough was done. Most stages have tori, which are used to transport the player to a different stage. Those are the gates that you walk into when you reach the end of a stage. On stages featured in side mode and plain mode, there are multiple tori, which will lead to different routes on the map. In big mode, however, there is only one tori at the end of the stage. The leading character is a historical Japanese samurai, Taira no Kankikyo, also known as Akusubichiyo Kankikyo. And I am so sorry, I know I butchered that. He fell in the Battle of Dan no Nura at the end of the Genpi War. In Genpi Tomoden, he was resurrected and fights Minamoto no Yoshitsune and Saito Musashibo Benkei over the Imperial Regalia of Japan, as well as to defeat his enemy Minamoto no Yoritomo. The game also features the Sanzu River, place believed in Japanese Buddhism to separate current life and afterlife, resembling the concept of the underworld or hell. This river is often compared to the river Styx in Greek mythology. Therefore, some mythological characters like Emma O, god of the underworld, and the sun goddess Amaterasu, is that how you say it? Ama, Amaterasu, appear in the game. Again, I really apologize if I butchered the Japanese on that. So, this game was included on Namco Museum 4, and you would think a very culturally Japanese game like this would not have been included on the US version, but it was. It was retitled the Genji and Haiki Clans, and localized to that degree with the appropriate amount of English necessary to understand what's going on, and it was included on Namco Museum Volume 4. Unfortunately, Volumes 2 and Volume 4 of the Namco Museum Collection are two of the hardest ones to get, along with Volume 5. Volume 1 and 3 both got a green Greatest Hits re-release, you know, with that green logo on the side, on the binding, on the, on whatever you want to call it, the fold-in, the, the, on the Jewel CD, the place where you read the title if you stack them up in a CD case. And I hear my cat crying at me. I don't know where he is right now, but he may interrupt this voiceover. Anyway, if you're looking to buy this on 
Namco Museum Volume 4, it's probably going to set you back a little bit. Let me see what it's currently going for. Namco Museum Volume 4. I haven't looked at this in a long time since I got it a long time ago. Eh, could be worse. Goes for $29 loose and $37 complete, so if you want to play the PlayStation version, you're going to pay for it, but I think it's actually even more expensive for PC Engine. And like I said, until I saw Saramaro play it, I didn't even know there was a PC Engine version, so... I don't think price charting has this on their list of TurboGrafx slash PC Engine games, so... I'm gonna just take a stab at eBay and see what it tends to go for. Kente Tomoden. Doing this live as I do the voiceover, and you're watching the big mode right now. The big mode is harder than you would think because you're swinging the sword in a full motion, so you actually have to hit some of the low enemies by swinging your sword before they get to you and letting the, how would you say, recoil, withdrawal, the arc of the sword returning, you have to like hit them with the sweep back instead of sweeping at them. Then you got this giant freaking skeleton here who even when he's a pile of bones still hurts you. You have to wait until the bones disappear completely. So that stymied me in big mode. At least when you die on a stage, it's generous enough to let you actually return to the stage. Hmm. Genpi Tomoden is not the most expensive PC Engine game, depending on which version of it you want. You can get it loose for 10 bucks. You can get it complete for 25 You can get the Famicom version for anywhere from 7 bucks loose to, wow, a dollar loose. So... It's obviously pretty common for Famicom, a little less common for PC Engine, and then the PlayStation Namco Museum Volume 4 version is probably the most expensive unless you're looking for a completely gem copy of it. Now there was a sequel to this game in both territories. It's called Genpei Tomoden Kan no Ni. And this one is, in fact, a PC Engine game that got localized in North America called Samurai Ghost. Let me see what that's going for. I don't think I have a copy of Samurai Ghost. There are a lot of PC Engine games that I can't afford physical copies of, and that might be one. That might be a future episode of PC Engine Files. You're watching Planes Mode right now as I look this up. Woo! Yeah! Samurai Ghost goes for 72 bucks loose and $154 complete. So, that's turning into that territory where the Super SD System 3 becomes a bargain because just two or three games like that is the entire cost of the Super SD System 3. So, not saying I encourage you to uh, bootleg games, but you could demo them, you could sample them with a Super SD System 3, and then of course decide if you really want to spend anywhere from 72 to 150 bucks on a game like Samurai Ghost, but before you do that, definitely start with Genpi Tomoden, because despite the ridiculous difficulty and the mob-like mentality of these enemies, it's actually a lot of fun to play. You're going to die a lot. You're going to have to restart a lot. But the restarts are fairly generous given that you get to go back to where you were, the stage you were on. The stages themselves are not overly long, so if you bum rush your way through it, sometimes you can just get lucky and finish a stage. And I like the sound and design. It's a little bit weird because your character's bright red hair and purple outfit just are garish to look at but I'd say this is one of those cases where the 
odd appearance of things is actually sort of the charm of it all. It's actually more fun because of that. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, this is the PC Engine Files, and as always, thank you for watching.